Now before you learn how to measure heat, let us try to understand what our picture of heat is, right? Because till now we do not have a picture, we only know that if I have a cold body here, and if I have a hot body here, most of the times, right? Of course, let us bar special cases, like if you really heat iron, it starts glowing and all. Let us forget all that. In a normal case, you may not know the difference between the two, just by looking. By touching is what we feel it. But this whole no difference while looking is valid only from this world. What is this world? Big world. Yeah. But if you go to the small world, and I mean really, really, really small, the microscopic world it's called. Micro meaning 10 to the power of minus 6. At that level, and even smaller if you go, then, yeah, in fact you have to go much, much, much smaller yeah, to the level of the balls that make us up. They're called, they can have a name, they're called atoms. Yeah. At that level if you go inside, then be things begin to start making sense visually. Yeah, because the hot body and the cold body, now you can see, don't look very same in this world, right? What's happening in the hot body, or what we call the hot body, what's happening inside it? Every single ball is really active, yeah? All of them seem to be mu much more active on average, bouncing around here and there. And you look here, it's a much more relaxed scene, lazing around, right? Yeah, really inactive. And now we don't yet know why while touching we feel this in a different way as heat and this in a different way as cold. We don't know that. But now we see that there is something different. Now to really understand what's going to happen about hotness and coldness, what if we bring these two together and just remove the partition between them? Then what happens? We allow the active and the inactive to interact, to discuss, to talk. Yeah? And when they do talk, watch what's happening. As they talk more and more, and why talk, what do I, what do I mean? They collide against each other. An active one collides against an inactive one and the inactive goes faster and the active slows down a bit. So in other words, the activity over here is reducing with time and the activity here is increasing with time. Eventually, they both become equally active or equally lazy depending on whether you are an optimist or a pessimist. But from physics, we know that they become equal. That's something we all agree with. So then you look and you realize that, okay, something is happening over here. Now, a way to see this for now, right? Because this picture that you have will stay with you even till your much higher standards. Yeah, you'll, you'll be given different names for this. I'm not giving you the names right now. But this idea of visualizing the hotness of a body as the amount of motion inside at the really, really atomic level is very useful. But for now, it's as if you take this hot body, right? And the cold body separately. Now, you just watch them again. Let's go back to our original state. We know what will happen now in reality, right? What's going to happen is the balls inside are going to collide the balls in that. But for now, you're going to say that this has some hotness and I want to show that hotness with its height. Yeah. So it's as if this is filled with some liquid called heat at some height. And this has a degree of hotness that is lesser. In other words, it's colder. So we're going to show the hotness and the coldness with the height. And then it's as if we connect a pipe between these two. Then what we say is some mysterious fluid called heat flows from a body that is hotter to a body that is colder. And this difference is what makes that heat flow. So we say that if we connect a hot body and a cold body, yeah, heat will flow from the hot body to the cold body. And we call the degree of hotness, we give a word for it, this is more hot. To say that we say this has more temperature. That's a word that we give, it's just a word. So this has more temperature, this has less temperature. So what is the difference in height for a, from our picture over here? That difference in height is what we call our temperature difference. But you may ask, if the degree of hotness of a body, which we call temperature, is the amount of activity at the really atomic level, if that is the real picture, then why do we have to visualize it as heat as some liquid that flows between a hot body to a cold body and visualize temperature as a difference in height? Why should we do all this? Yeah, This is a good place to begin. Because whenever we as humans, right, by we I mean that, humans, face something very unfamiliar, new, something we haven't seen before, we tend to think of it, that new thing, in terms of something very familiar. And what is the most familiar thing for us? We've been building civilizations on rivers ever since, right? So all we know is water, and we're very familiar, water flows. So we think of new things as a flow of some kind of liquid that is not water. Now later, very soon, you'll also learn something called electric current. An electric current was also initially thought of as some mysterious fluid that flowed between some objects and did not flow in some objects. We didn't really understand it, so we thought of it as something like water. 
So that's where we began with heat as well. We thought of it as something that flows. Today we know what's happening inside, but this is still a very simple, interesting way to visualize the whole thing. So what are we actually saying? If heat flows between two bodies, we say that body A from which the heat flowed is at a higher temperature and body B to which the heat flowed is at a lower temperature. That's all we're saying. Then we said the temperature, in other words, the amount of activity of body A will reduce and the amount of activity of body B will increase. In other words, in our picture, this picture, what will happen? The height of body A will keep reducing and the height of body B will keep increasing, which means the flow will become slower, 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 slower till they both reach the same height. And once they've reached the same height, if we connect them through a pipe, if we connect two vessels through a pipe where the height is same, will any liquid flow through them? It won't, right? Yeah, so the heat flow stops. And once the heat flow stops, we say that the two of these objects are at the same temperature. By the way, there is a word for this. Word for what? The idea that if I connect these two bodies by a pipe, no heat will flow between them. If that is true, then we say they are both the same temperature, right? The other word for it is to say that they are in thermal equilibrium. So if you like to remember words, you can remember this is just a word. So when you say two objects are in thermal equilibrium, what you are saying is that if you connect them, no heat will flow between them. Now, the interesting thing here is that if you had two bodies, right, say A and B, and if you connected A and B and if no heat flowed between them, then you say they are in thermal equilibrium. Let's say you bring another body C and you connect that to A, yeah, and then if you find that no heat flows between C and A also, then you say these two are in thermal equilibrium. Then they are all at the same height, right. So if I just remove A from the picture and connect them directly with the pipe, C and B, then what will happen? You will expect that no heat will flow between C and B as well. In other words, C and B are also in thermal equilibrium, right. In other words, if A and B are the same temperature and A and C are the same temperature, then C and B will also be of the same temperature. Now from this picture, this seems very obvious, right. So it must be true, yeah. But this is not true because we drew this picture, no. We drew this picture because we checked with reality and this is how it's happening. We found out, we took AB, we did all this and we checked, oh nice, this is working. So we have this picture with us. So this simple picture is derived from reality and reality doesn't derive from this. This idea over here, right, yeah, actually has a very interesting name. It's called the zeroth law of thermodynamics. Now this is usually taught in 11th standard. But as you can see, the idea is so simple that we can introduce it really, really early. And this is going to allow us to define temperature in a much more meaningful way. Now one thing of course that I want you to observe, right, is this. Did you observe something? If I have a jug on top and say a huge bucket below also, which has more heat fluid? The bucket, correct. The jug has only less liquid fluid. But if you connect the jug to the bucket, what will happen? Where will the heat flow from and where will it flow to? It will flow from the jug to the bucket, even though there is less heat there because its height is larger. And what is the height equivalent to? To the temperature. So the amount of heat contained in a body is a different question from the temperature of a body. Yeah, The temperature is equivalent to the height in our picture. So even though the heat here is low, the temperature is higher. So I want you to keep this in mind as we step into the question of all oh, this is okay. How do I in my real life measure temperature? Please tell me that.